Well, it's really nice to be with you here today, Will, um, Head of B-Dales, and we have caught you at a special moment in, in history, haven't we, in, in a sense, because you're a new head, um, you're at B-Dales, which some people know, some people don't know, um, but it has a reputation as being a bit of a unique school, and I mean, it's only been a couple of weeks since you, you, you've actually formally uh, been the head. What... Is that like we're, we're going to try and prize from you some of your thoughts about you know, where you are now, what this means, and kind of how you view the world of education. So hmm. go for it. Well, no, thank you very much, and thank you very much for having me. Um, it, it, you're, you're, you're the first uh, sort of press interview I've done since since taking oh. taking up the permanent headship. So there we go, exclusivity. Yes, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm delighted that it's you. So um, it, it, it's a really exciting moment, um, d d genuinely, uh, be because I now have a, a particular mandate in terms of thinking about the future, mm. um, and particularly thinking about the next decade. In fact. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I suppose for an educator in, in any school that's exciting but for an educator in this school it's particularly exciting because um, the, the kind of founding principle of this school they, they, they were always kind of set on being different on being innovative mm -hmm. on asking maybe difficult questions about education Mm -hmm. uh, in a way that then kind of sets me up to be quite bold in terms of my ideas. And seeing as I wanted to come to BDLs in the first place um, from almost four years ago now, um, and started now almost a year ago, um, then then it, it was the kind of what's called the BDLs difference that really attracted me. So uh, I had got to the point where, um, although I completely understand why other schools do it, but I myself, was just ever so slightly bored of um, telling teenagers off for having shirts untucked or ties that needed doing up or skirts that were too short, heaven forbid. Um, and, and so I, I really wanted to come to a place where I didn't have to worry about that and my interactions with students walking around the school could be much more positive um, and much more kind of about them and their learning and whatever was happening with them. So that was, that was one thing. And then I, I was particularly excited about the curriculum here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been about 15 years now since we've been doing BACs, BDL Success yeah. Courses, mm -hmm. which are our um, sort of GCSE equivalents. Mm -hmm. And we now do a kind of 50-50 split between GCSEs and BACs. Uh, and uh, my previous school are kind of looking into doing something similar, but, but um, uh, I, I was so excited about coming to somewhere which had already gone down that route uh, way before other schools and, and had made a real success of doing their own curriculum. And, and, and I think it, it, it's really clear that teachers are perfectly capable of crafting excellent, high quality curricula without the need for an exam board or the Department for Education to kind of micromanage what that looks like. Um, also, just really exciting that the assessment isn't all based on, you know, the kind of 32 hours worth of exams mm. uh, that, that poor 16 year olds have um, at the end of their GCSE course, on which everything rests pretty much now that coursework has basically been got rid of. Um, so so that, that that was another kind of really exciting thing. And, and like in my kind of looking to look into the future now, then then the, the, the idea is, is to in increase the number of BACs and reduce the number of, B of GCSEs probably to a kind of two GCSE and kind of eight or nine BAC model. It's not that I don't agree with external assessment. I just don't agree with the amount that we put 16 year olds through, um, regardless of their journey. But BDELS is, is an academic school where our students go on to do A-levels and we only teach A-levels. Mm. Um, ultimately, like you don't need to do GCSEs in order to progress through to A-levels. And actually we think our BACs do a better job of preparing them for A-levels than GCSEs, which ha have a different remit. And yes, they were a good thing when they were invented, that you know, the ideas behind them were great, but, but I think their time has come. And there are lots of other educators who think the same thing. You know, um, people across the academic spectrum are asking questions about GCSEs. The nice thing for me at BDLs is to be at a school which, which has already moved beyond them, certainly in terms of the paradigm that other schools have to operate on. Um, I, I suppose there are other things as well about this particular moment which are very exciting, mm -hmm. um, not just because I'm a new head, but also because we are in the kind of um, the tail end, touch wood, of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and that gives us this kind of energy, this kind of post-pandemic kind of um, perspective for us to kind of sit 
sit, sit back and say, okay, so what have we learned? What has this changed? And, and now what are we gonna do? And, and I think for, for, for schools and for the education system in, in, in this country, then I think the next kind of 18 months are really, really crucial in terms of seizing the opportunity and the energy we have. And if we don't at least start on, you know, really kind of significant kind of reforms at national level in the next 18 months, then I fear we, we will have lost this opportunity. Now, the great thing about BDOS is we're an independent school and we exercise our independence um, in, in a way that sometimes doesn't happen elsewhere. And, and, and again, hopefully we can show other people that it's okay <laughs> not to do the same model that everyone else does and, and that actually you can be quite bold and, and actually that's really successful for students yeah. uh, and, and giving them more ownership of their learning and giving them a, a kind of a better balance in terms of kind of the curriculum content but also the assessment offer it, it is something which actually is better for their learning and better for them. So those are all really balance, exciting. though. You talked and you talked about a few things. I mean, thinking about about I'm thinking trying to to picture the threads that come through. I'm thinking post pandemic balance. Yeah. I mean, there are major issues facing the world. And when we think yeah. about uh, the environment, when we think about sustainability, I mean, are, are those threads which come through uh, work at Bedales? You've 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 preempted what I was just about to say. So well done. Great, great minds think <laughs> um, alike. <laughs> so the, the, the other big thing, I mean, obviously there's a, there's a crisis at the moment, um, politically and militarily in Eastern Europe, but but um, there is also a global crisis, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of people are talking about. And uh, I, I think particularly when we think about young people, we're talking about their future, and so. I think schools and, and, and educators have a particular responsibility to think even more about uh, the climate crisis and, and sustainability in the environment, maybe than, than maybe people who are, who are kind of working in, in different fields. Um, and, and, and so for me, uh, and again, BDOS gives me this wonderful gift because it, it's, well, first of all, it's a rural campus in the South Downs National Park. So it's, it's a beautiful place. It's very green. Um, but we, we have this tradition of, of working on the land, of having students uh, kind of, you know, work on the farm, uh, grow crops and, and, and fruit and vegetables. Uh, we're currently in the middle of lambing season. Mm -hmm. um, so so that, that's, you know, an annual fixture there. And, uh, little pig and Bessie are two uh, sows, uh, pig, pig sows, they, they are both pregnant and so within the next month or so we'll be looking forward to some two more litters of piglets uh, and, and, and the goats have just given birth to uh, twins as well uh, and so yes we're, we're full of the joys of spring and, and that kind of annual reminder of the cycles of life mm, mm, mm. It, it is, is, is actually more important now than ever and you know there's been so many anxieties about the disconnect between maybe young people and their environment mm. uh, we have the infrastructure we have the the, the kind of the traditions to 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 bring, bring them back to understanding where food comes from, uh, how food is produced and, 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 and how we kind of you know, curate our landscape and, 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 and care for, for, for our environment. Um, I, I think though one of the things that I really want to think about in the future though is, is about embedding that environmental education uh, across the curriculum rather than just in our outdoor work department. Right. So and making sure that you know biology connects with what we're doing on the farm, mm -hmm. making sure that in English, I don't know, we're thinking about nature poetry. Uh, mm -hmm. If we're thinking about you know business studies, we're thinking about how you know the, how the economics of agriculture yes. operate, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. you know the students are directly involved in conversations about the pricing of, for example, those lovely cute lambs. A year later, they they do most of them get sent off to the abattoir, and mm -hmm. they come back with slaughter, and we sell them. And the mm. students are involved in, in discussing the price points for that. Mm. Um, but we use the whole animal as well. So, you know, the, the whole animal comes back and the students then also get involved in uh, scraping the fleeces and salting them ready then for kind of final processing. And then, and then we sell the fleeces and just getting them involved in that kind of young enterprise yes. but, but yeah. that's from our farm and that is part of those mm -hmm. kind of natural cycles. And, you know, they, they, they see some of the, the challenging things of conversations about whether we should be eating, eating meat, um, seeing occasionally, you know, when, there's, when, when one of the ewes, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, gives birth to a still lamb mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's really heartrending but again they need to have those kind of real lessons rather than us kind of packing them up in cotton wool and pretending that you know we're, we're I don't know we're at Versailles on Marie Antoinette's farm far from it it's a you know, it's a it's a real farm and real things happen on it including things which are 
are sad and difficult, but again, that's really good for their resilience. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, 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 I want us to do even more of that kind of... Um, inter uh, intermingle then, or yeah. to leave um, yeah. uh, what's happening there with the rest of the curriculum. Yeah. And is that and then, is that your ten year plan? I mean, is that or is that? Which, that that's, that's definitely part of it. And then also working on energy usage. Again, a big hot topic. Yes. But oh, we yes. were planning this before the, this exact crisis. We've actually got our first solar panels being installed on the, the buildings just next to my office, which have flat roofs. Uh, and you know, I mean, I don't know any of your listeners maybe have had solar panels installed domestically, but you can chart in real time the data in terms of how much energy you're producing, and, and getting students involved in yes. analysing yeah. that data uh, is is again really exciting. And we can use our our campus and we can use the systems here and involve students in that. In, in, a, in a way, again, which is an expectation. Students expect to be consulted, expect to have a say in how we run the school and the democratic institu institutions that we have in terms of student council um, and, and, and other forms of student involvement it, it, it is again, something which is a really exciting thing to work with because to me, that feels like a much better preparation for young people in terms of empowering them to, to be able to, to, to know how to take ownership of, of systems, of organizations, of, of communities um and and the best way to learn about that is by getting involved rather than just being told it and, and, and we do that a lot so how do you anticipate them taking that forward into life beyond school so they'll mm. come through this education they will they'll have their a levels at the end of it they'll go on what would you like for them to take forward mm. So, so we're, we're very proud of um, old Bedalians because they are often people who are uh, really strong at, again, challenging the status quo. They've come mm -hmm. from a school which is you know, predicated on cha challenging the status quo and, and, and they, they kind of internalise that, that kind of critical thinking perspective on the world. Um, also because we have much kind of um, less hierarchical structures mm -hmm. here. In terms of how we interact with the students they call us by our first names we, mm. we wear you know jumpers and, and and cords rather than necessarily you know suits and ties that um, help yeah. with the heating not having the heating on too much as well. well yes yes yes, yes. That, 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 that could help definitely uh, <laughs> um they um they they they, they develop an authenticity Yes. Uh, they practice being adults by being more adult with adults in terms of having those kind of less hierarchical connections with their teachers. It doesn't mean that we don't have professional boundaries. It doesn't mean that we're not uh, aware of our, our professional responsibilities. And, and mm. we do know that they are still young people who have much to learn. But at the same time, they, they, they feel confident enough to be able to look us in the eye to engage with us and to engage mm. with other adults. So when they leave here, then they're not as phased by the adult world as, as maybe other students from other schools. And certainly when I first visited yeah. here on a research visit, then I really genuinely noticed a difference in the way yeah. the students who, I, who took me on a tour interacted with me as, as a visitor they'd never met. There was a, 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 a not an arrogant confidence, a, a, but a quiet confidence ground, grounded in authenticity and self-knowledge. And, and I suppose that development of self is for me as important as any other thing that we educate them for because it's only in really knowing yourself that that you can be authentic and for me that that then will lead you to being happy and fulfilled and choosing things for your pathways in life which will of course in the future be even more multifaceted than they currently are mm -hmm. um, but but to guide where you're going to go I, I think that self-knowledge is a really really powerful skill mm -hmm. in the in the 21st century mm -hmm. um, and i fear that our systems that we have particularly in in, in in england specifically often lead to inauthentic behavior in young people they they are trained nowadays in many schools to to be compliant um, and the structures are there to create compliance Mm. And, and I worry about that because what, what does that teach them about the real world? What does that teach them about life beyond school? Because uh, we don't necessarily want young people to be completely compliant. We, mm. we want people to appreciate what it is to live in a community. Yes. We want people to be sensitive to other people around them and, and we work on that here. But at the same time, we also want them not to blindly follow the, the rules that we, we do have here. And we're definitely a we're, we're definitely not a permissive school, we're a progressive school, but we're not a permissive school. And we, we have lots of conversations about rules and boundaries, but, mm. but students have a right to question those boundaries. Um, and that does sometimes mean when you're talking to a student who's crossed a boundary or got something wrong, uh, that 
that it might take a bit longer to have that, mm -hmm. that, that disciplinary conversation. But the, the, the conversation is an educational one. It's a rather, learning conversation. Yeah, rather than a one. Mm -hmm. and, and again, for me, that's, that's the way I think education mm -hmm. should be. And, and I know that colleagues in other schools have that, that spirit within them. They, they are fundamentally kind uh, people who, who care for the students uh, that they work with but sometimes the structures that they have to operate in order mm. to you know make the school run sometimes feel a, a little a little detached or cold uh, and, and I don't feel that here and, and, and that's it's so exciting to be the head of a school which has this kind of culture mm. um, so, so those are, are definitely really important things in terms of those those kind of interactions with people. And what about the impact that you would like to have? And I'm thinking not just in the school, because you've talked a lot about that, but beyond the school. What, what would you like to be able to, to, to say to the, the world of boarding, the world of education, um, society in general? What would you like to be able to do? So I suppose there's, there's kind of two things. I mean, the first one I've already sort of talked about a little bit, which is very much the connection between, uh, in some ways, what we do here and the way in which we can perhaps demonstrate to the rest of the world that there are different ways of doing things in education. Yeah. So I definitely feel we justify our charitable status by being by, by giving the benefit of, of an alternative perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I think that's really healthy uh, for the sector to see that that different ways of approaching things are possible. And I, I, I you know, humbly, uh, it's not about bragging about what we do, but, but I, I humbly want to be able to demonstrate to people both in the UK, but also internationally, that there are there are alternative ways of doing things without necessarily you know throwing the baby out of the bath, bath water. I think mm. you know, there are so many things that actually aren't as different here as people might think from the outside. Mm. We're not as kooky as, as people might think we are. We are. We're not. We're, we're not a fully democratic school, for example. Um, but I suppose maybe also on a personal level, um, then then there's an element of role modelling which is maybe specific to me. Um, so I'm one of the very few openly gay head teachers of a boarding school in the UK. Mm. And while you know, Section 28 is, is long dead and gone, thank goodness, and you know we have um, e equal status for LGBT people in society, mm. it's interesting how the kind of the shadow of Section 28 and, mm. and anxieties that and, and prejudices which still exist in society, residual ones mm. are, are, are particularly, I think, kind of, um, kind of st still, 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 kind of there in, in, in mm. education, and particularly, I think, for, for boarding schools. So, coming here for me, I, I have mm. felt very well. My partner and I have felt very, very welcome. Mm. Um, mm. And I taught in a very liberal London school where I felt extremely welcome as well. But it was a London day school. Here, I'm in a rural uh, boarding school. And, and you know, na naturally, for most of them, I think that you're going to see institutions which are generally more socially conservative. Um, and, and while I don't know this for fact, I, I, I do know anecdotally that, that, that uh, it, it, it's not as easy, perhaps, for openly LGBT educators to become heads in, in, in mm. boarding schools, especially ones in, in, in maybe rural areas. Now, I, I, you know, again, as I said, I, I don't know as a fact, and I, it's, it's nothing which is overt. No one makes that as an advert. If they did, that would be illegal. <laughs> yes. But that, that kind of culture change, that culture change, you know, does take time. And I, and I suppose it's important, even for the students in my school, but for students generally, to see that, that there are no barriers and, okay. and that the sexuality is just part of what makes me me. It's not the only thing about me, but, but it is an important thing. Um, but but that, that there should be no barriers to success. And and Bedell says, "Not give me far from it. They have they have given me, you know, this this role. And they've trusted me with that in, in a way which, which you know, I I, I feel really moved by because mm. it, it it feels like you know even from the 1990s when I was at secondary school when you know, Section 28 still existed, mm. then then education has shifted. And and I suppose if I can do anything to exemplify that to mm. head teachers, to aspiring head teachers um, who might be nervous about." this and to show boarding schools uh, up and down the country that that actually that kind of openness is is, is healthy and positive yeah. and yeah. it's it's really really good for for especially lgbt students and other students to 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 ha have you know, you know this kind of uh, role modeling in terms of leadership um and that diversity I'm, makes a difference and, and yes. uniqueness of individuals is to be welcomed Completely, yes. and it's not just about it's not just about sexuality. It's not about yeah. gender identity, you know, race, and uh, class diversity background. of thought 
as well. Diversity of Absolutely. thought, I think it's, it's very important. That's one of the things that I feel is very important, particularly when I'm thinking about it from a board perspective. Um, mm. But uh, that's really important there. But you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, well, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Can I ask you one final question for, for this interview, which is that if you had a crystal ball and you were to look five years into the future, okay, mm. what do you think schools in the UK will be like then? You might want to add to that a little bit of what you hope they will be to, they, they'll be like. <laughs> but, 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 but just just try and imagine what would that what mm. do you think in five years time we're going to see? So I, I, I think um, things will be different with GCSEs. Mm. Uh, I while while I have an anxiety that it might not happen, I'm pretty confident it will be different. You know, there are examples, for example, trialing at the moment uh, online assessments for GCSEs, mm. for example. Uh, I think you may see like an English and a maths GCSE, which is online. Mm. Uh, and the moment you can do that, the moment you in some ways really democratize how that, or when that can happen. So there's be more flexibility. So not all students will necessarily be at the same age. Mm. Um, I think it'll be much more a kind of portfolio of different things. There's been conversations about baccalaureate. Now, considering the pace of change in education in this country, I fear that that, that, that will not necessarily have been fully enacted. In five although years' time. Yeah. In five years' time, but I think it will definitely be progressing. Yeah. Um, hopefully here at Bdales, we, we'll, we'll have already got there, uh, yeah. and other people yeah. will be like, oh, we, we need to catch up with that. Um, but I, I think also, um, so yeah, I, th I think assessment will, will be much more kind of um, computer-based. And I think just generally learning will be more uh, computer-based. The, the, the pandemic has definitely kind of moved the sector forward and I think mm -hmm. one of the things that was holding back online assessments or students typing exams was the state sector was not well funded enough to provide yes. devices yes. for those individual students. Now that has sort of happened, not completely, but, but mm -hmm. we will get there and I think once you do that then, then you open up a whole new series of possibilities. So yes. the, yeah. the tech side will be very, very different. Um, uh, I, I, I think also um, with that liberalisation, then I would like to think there will be more flexibility about curriculum, and mm -hmm. I would hope that the environment. Um, I mean, I, I know that existing subjects like geography and biology yeah. already talk right. about those 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 things, mm -hmm. but, but maybe we have it as a, a more specific focus, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully, young people will or be, core be part focus. Of I think I'm hearing you say as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and that young people maybe be, be part of that more more actively. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think, you know, maybe from a boarding school perspective, then I, I, I think we will see an ever decreasing number of single sex boarding schools. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine, and this is something we will be looking into, that more and more boarding schools will be looking to go down fully co-educational boarding houses rather than single sex boarding houses. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it's starting to happen and, and watch this space at Bdales, but but I think that, mm -hmm. that I think not only is that shift away from single sex education happening, but I, I think also um, within a boarding context, then, then I think, um, you know, not, not mixed sex dorms, but, but yeah. houses where, where yeah. you, you mix all the sexes, all the genders in, in a way that yeah. breaks down some of those traditional binaries yeah. that, that are, are not helpful for anyone, I think, regardless of their sexuality. It's not, it's not an LGBT thing primarily, although it will benefit students uh, who are more fluid about their gender identity or their sexuality. But it's, it's more just that if you're going to be co-ed, then you need to be co-ed everywhere yeah. rather than just in the classroom. And so that, that's definitely something that, that I think will, will be a, something within five years, which will be very different, uh, even if that, that journey will still be ongoing. That sounds like a little bit of a wish list. We should revisit this conversation, shouldn't Ooh. we, in five years' time, or four and a half years' time, and then just see how close we are to it as well. But Will, thank you so much for your time. It's been such a pleasure meeting you, and I look forward to speaking again. Thank you for having me.